I'm going to share some ideas that I believe will be very, very important to you financially. The number one idea is how to avoid being audited by the IRS because you, each and every one of you, imagine yourselves with a target right in front of you. That's what you are right now and I'll tell you why. The second idea is I'll tell you if you are audited, if you are audited, how to handle it and how to come out unscathed, but most of all, how to audit proof your tax return. The other idea I'm going to share with you is how to use wisely those commissions you earn because you see the bottom line is that it's not what you earn, it's what you get to keep and what you do with it. With you is wealth building, how to achieve the goal that really you each have even if you haven't exactly formulated and that is financial independence. Hey, you folks like magic? You do? Oh, great. We're going to do some magic with you two ladies. Okay, do you have a high tolerance for pain? Can I just... Uh, <laughs> yeah, does this involve a saw? Okay. In Las Vegas, I saw a magician named Lance Burton. And Lance Burton made 27 showgirls disappear into a Corvette. 27. I wanted to know where those showgirls went. My wife said that it just was not information I had to have. But then he made the Corvette disappear. So we're going to do a little bit of money magic. Okay, let's do a little bit of money magic. I'm going to ask you to tell me, don't touch it. Oh my God, don't touch it. <laughs> How much money is on the table? Say, oh, what's your name? Anne. Anne? And Lillian. Lillian? Lillian. Okay, you both look like smart ladies. <laughs> You're listening to me, you have to be, right? Okay. So, Anne, is Lillian right? Is it 66 cents? Okay. Yes. Is Anne right? Yes. 66 cents? Okay. Excuse me. Let's take a look. See these two quarters? Look at the different shine on one of them. A little bit different, isn't it? No, no, besides that. This one shines a little bit more. It's a silver quarter. It's worth $3. No, that's a regular dime. That's worth 10 cents. Fooled you again. Okay. The penny, the penny, some of you folks who are you know, a little bit younger than me might not remember this. <laughs> this is a penny that was minted in 1944 when we had a copper shortage during the war. It's an alloy penny and it's worth about three bucks. And look over here above the Capitol Dome, there's a letter there. Okay. Can I pick it up? Yeah, by all means. I was only kidding about not touching it. Watch you go, poof, she's gone, where'd you go? <laughs> Let it pee. That means it was made in the Philadelphia Mint, and there's only a few of them around, and that's worth about 20 bucks. Three dollars. So, and I'm sorry, Lil Lillian, is it? Is it? Yeah. Lillian, and how much money is on the table? About 28 dollars. Right. Now, what happened here? We got two smart ladies, and you were going to treat 28 bucks like it was 66 cents. What happened? Well. The answer with that is you're not trained in numismatic. You're not trained in rare coins. So you were going to treat that, you know, put it in a phone booth or buy coffee with it if you can do it with 66 cents. But you fail to recognize the true value because you were not trained. So now my question for every one of you out here, for every one of you, how well trained are you in tax laws? How well trained are you in estate planning? I Distribution. Is it possible that you could treat your estate like 66 cents when it's worth 28 bucks? So what's a no limit person and why should you even want to be one? Well, whenever there's a situation, whenever there's a difficulty, whenever there's a problem, whenever something new and challenging has to be done, a limit person will always say, oh, I don't know. We can't do that. I've never done that before. I really can't do that. It's not my job. A no limit person will say, hey, let's do it. We'll figure it out. Maybe not today. Maybe not even this year. But we'll figure it out. Let's do it. So how do you become a no limit person? What is it that you have to do? Well, there are three, three characteristics that a no limit person has. Three specific traits. And the first one is that a no limit person understands that perception is reality. 
You see, we perceive things. Some of these perceptions are thrown at us by circumstances, by teachers, by parents, by people who are well-meaning, by others who are not well-meaning, by society. And so we take these perceptions and they become our reality and sometimes we create our own. And those perceptions become a reality that either binds us or empowers us. Perception is reality. But the one thing, when you do something for your grandchildren in your estate planning, remember this, grandchildren are your reward for not strangling your kids when they were teenagers. <laughs> and let me assure you that there are two things in life that you don't want to watch while they're making them. The first one is sausages, and the second is tax loss. In doing the study for my book, with the baby boomer generation, which many of you are in, and I'm one, I was born in 1945, if don't want to do the math, that makes me 48 years old. And <laughs> that political process works when it comes to making tax laws. All you have to do is look at the word. The word politics. Word politics. The first half of the word comes from the Greek, poly. It means many. And ticks, well, you know what they are. They're little blood-sucking insects. You cannot fail. You were not made to fail. You were made in the image of your creator, and failure was never built into the plan. And if you take nothing else from our brief time tonight, then I want you to take this, that you cannot fail. There is no such thing as failure. It does not exist. We should remove that word from the English language. Now, last year, I gave a series of seminars for a major life insurance company up in Syracuse. And a young man came up to me at a break and said, Patrick, when I first took my life insurance test, I failed. The computer spat out a piece of paper that said, I failed. New York State sent me a letter that says, I failed. So how can you say that there's no such thing as failure? There is no such thing as failure. Don't listen to the computer. It's a dumb machine. It's a wheelbarrow with wires. Don't listen to a computer. Don't listen to New York State. They're politicians. You, you, you don't listen to them. You cannot fail. You did not fail. What happened? is that you simply got different results than you anticipated. It's not quite, it's not quite as simple because it has to do with something called MAGI, M-A-G-I. Because they couldn't, you know, changing the laws and making it simple for real estate, I think it threw them in a loop and they said, you know, we gotta complicate things somewhere. So let's complicate this. That's modify, adjust the gross income for purposes of a Roth IRA. And it's calculated with a number of things that are brought back. But roughly speaking, 100,000 and 150 somewhat thousand for a couple. That's the cap on income. I, I know a lot of people promote it, but they just do not make sense. They don't make sense at all. Do not contribute to a non-deductible IRA. See, IRAs have baggages. They have baggages. You have to begin withdrawal at age 70 and a half. You cannot begin withdrawal until age 59 and a half. And if you die, somebody's going to pay taxes on it. Those are the distribution rules. So if you contribute money to an IRA that you don't deduct, you don't get the benefit. You just carry the baggage. Why do that? There's lots of other vehicles that you can use. And yes. I thank you very much. Thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, I thank you very much. And leave me those cards. <laughs> I guarantee each and every one of you that I will see you. I will see you in a place of the heart. I will see you in a place of the mind. I will see you in a place where there truly are no limits. Thank you.